like to introduce our second speaker, uh, who is Zara Gursoy. Uh, sorry for my pronunciation. Um, she is a, an MA student in the Applied Linguistics program at Technical University Karadeniz. Uh, she completed Uh, Joanna, so, sorry, but uh, I, we cannot hear you. Uh, could you please? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Now, yeah. Now we can. Okay, so so um, I will repeat uh, myself a bit. Uh, once again, thank you very much for your great presentation. Uh, and now I would like to um, introduce Zara Gursoy, sorry for my pronunciation, um, who will be the second um, uh, speaker today. Um, uh, Zara uh, is an MA student now in the Applied Linguistics uh, program at Karadeniz uh, Technical University. Uh, she completed her BA with Phi Honors and now at the same university and uh, she worked as an English teacher at a private language school and spent five mon mo months in uh, Hungary uh, with Erasmus Plus program. Um, now uh, she is preparing her MA uh, thesis and she's planning to continue her PhD degree. Uh, her research interests in so uh, the floor um, is hello. yours. Welcome. Hello. I'm sorry I missed your uh, last sentences. I couldn't hear your voice. I hope that's okay. So uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Zahra Gursoy, as previously mentioned. I'm an MA student in Applied Linguistics and a research assistant at Cardenas Technical University's English Language and Literature Department. I am very happy to be here with the Indelt family for the second time tonight. Mm -hmm. And I'm very uh, happy to be given this opportunity by Ed Shukrojam and Ferit Kaluchkaya and Joanna Kikdragis. I hope I am right with my pronunciation. So tonight, uh, my topic is about an end -end based grammar lesson focused on modal auxiliary verbs. Let me share my screen very quickly. Okay. Okay, so I guess you can uh, see my screen now. Um, and I guess I won't be able to see the chat box. So for the time being, if you have any contributions, I will see them after the uh, presentation. Okay, so before moving on, uh, let me give you a brief information on the tools and corpus uh, that I'm going to use for the session. Um, our main goal is using uncon concordances in grammar teaching as a tool for consciousness raising activities. In order to, to uh, in order to do that, we will use uncon uh, software with core corpus in intermediate level. The reason why I'm using the same corpus with Adish Projam is to show you that in order to teach a grammar topic, you don't need to strictly stick to a specific kind of book as long as it covers your grammar topic. You can also work with commonly used re uh, reading books to re maintain the interest of your students, noting that you can apply the lesson plan to different corpus for the same grammar instruction. The level of the students will be pre-intermediate and grammar topic model auxiliary verbs will be covered in this section. Um, so uh, starting the lesson, we should make sure that uh, our students know what we are going to teach them, what we are going to talk about. And in this session, I am going to teach them model auxiliary verbs. So I need to show them first what they are going to see in, during this session. So this, those are the model uh, verbs that we are going to focus on during this session. Can, could, may, might, must, shall, uh, shall should, will, and would would be covered uh, with our uh, Ancon software in this session. Um, sorry, huh, okay. So as you see, I have an eight step lesson plan to teach model auxiliary verbs to my pre-intermediate level students. And after letting uh, students know that uh, there are nine uh, MAVs uh, we are going to examine, uh, 
the lesson will start with the upload of the corpus to the endcom software. So let us do all the steps uh, together. So on the endcom uh, software, I'm going to open my corpus file. This is my corpus. As you see, they are all uh, uploaded to the software. Now I, um, I want my students to produce a word list for this uh, corpus. Let me move my speaker here. Okay. So, but before that, uh, I want to uh, set my options for the software. For example, for Kivik Sword, I want to see my concordance lines with uh, one before my main word, one after my main word, and two after my main word. What is this all about? Now let's see what uh, was that all about. Now I came to the word list section, actually option to the corpus. Uh, for students to uh, produce a word list, you have many ways to dive into your um, topic, let's say. For the first option, uh, I will ask the students a pro uh, to produce a word list for the corpus, then search for the nine MAVs we learned. So how is how it's going to happen? I will start my word list process. As you can see in here, in this corpus, the most frequently used words are here in this section, but I want my students to search for the MAVs that we are going to focus on. They can one by one look at these lines and find the MAVs that we are going to look for. And as you can see, actually can, oh, here is wood, for example. They can search one by one through this list, but it will going to take too long to um, find all the words. So um, I won't choose this way to um, make sure my students uh, know what they are searching for, but this is a good option to use when you want to know your students know what the whole corpus is all about. So in my, sorry, for my second uh, option, I'm going to the settings. I'm going coming to the tool preferences. I'm coming to the word list. Now word list range. I want my students to find the nine MAVs there we are going to use for this uh, session. So I'm going to use specific words below and I will add them one by one. Let's start with will, shoot. Actually, you can um, add this list uh, as a text file, but I, for the sake of this session, I'm going to add them one by one. Would, might, oops, sorry, may. May, might, would, can, could. So which one did I miss? I guess I have missed two of them. Let me go back to my list. Oh, wow, I missed must. Yes, can, and. Let me check to the box real quickly. Oh, and shall, okay. Thank you. Now I finished my list. I say apply and I'll say start. And as you can see, now I have found the nine MAVs that I'm going to uh, examine for this specific grammar topic. Now, uh, you see, this is the uh, table that we see in the uh, software here. Now you can see that, oh, actually I forgot, oops, sorry. Um, I forgot to add the apostrophe LL in here because it's since this corpus is uh, a mix between formal and informal writing, we, you can miss some of the uh, will verbs in here. But let's say we added that for the sake of this session in order to not uh, waste any more time. So let me go to Ken. I click on the can on the word list and now I see the concordance line so that I can uh, see in the corpus 
where can is used. So let's take a look all together. Again, we are at the beginning, uh, beginning of our lesson. We uh, uploaded our file. Uh, we produced a word list. I showed you two uh, options for the uh, word list. Then we, uh, we started to find the uh, model uh, auxiliary verbs in the list. Now we are one by one examining them. So as you can see in here, how can you use in one, um, one sentence, for example, when a map is new and can be used for many things. Okay, so we are kind of trying to see a sentence structure. We are kind of trying to see the meaning uh, on the sentence, how uh, the word that we are focusing is located in the sentence, etc. Now let's go to wood, for example. Let's see the uh, concordance lines again. An abortion would be the best. Okay, so let's start with the um, what? Let's start it with the easier uh, option. Let's start with the meanings of sentences in here. So I want my students to know that we are focusing on modal auxiliary verbs. We are trying to see how they are used in sentences, in what way we can use these uh, verbs in our sentences. For example, an, an, an abortion would be the best solution to the, probably, let's see the rest of the word, to the problem. Okay, so we have a suggestion, I guess, right? Uh, what else? An adult would start a story about a man, blah, blah, blah. So we have some actions in here. What about must? Let's see how must is used in a sentence. By the way, you can share your opinions on the sentences also in, in which context those verbs are used in the sentences. What is the meaning that uh, the writer tries, tries to convey in the sentences? Because as students, they are trying to guess what is happening in the sentence with the word that we are uh, examining. Now let's go on. For example, the analysis should support action. So we have what? We have what kind of meaning behind this sentence? Or for example, targeted advertisements should make customers happy. Okay, so we have expectations. We have, let's see, may. What else we have? We gather from these sentences. And if you are writing to chat, I guess I can see them right now feel free to share your uh, opinions on the sentences, sentence meanings, let's say. Uh, you could be the student, students for this session, actually. What about May? But the creature may be whistling or singing a song, for example. Okay, so there's a possibility, probability in here. And the animal may have ex uh, escaped from him. Okay, we have still the same meaning. Let's go with Shall. Um, let's see, let's see. For example, there are many questions with shall. We started with uh, questions for the concordances. Shall I bring you some coffee? Shall we go back home? Okay, there are, these are questions, but what kind of questions? Let's go to the full text and see what is the context actually. For example, I don't know, replied Grace looking at the floor. Do you want to turn around? Shall we go back home? Grace gave a small laugh. Well, shall we? So we are trying to see the bigger picture here with the file view section. Now let's go to another sentences. For example, um, I shall marry uh, Guineaware. I shall marry Guineaware. Okay, so we are kind of reading into an old text, I guess, old literary text. Now let's go on with, for example, wood. Did we go with wood? Let's, let's go with it. The airport would pay them for the loss. Okay, so do you see what we are trying to do? Trying to do with our corpus tool here? We gave them a thing to search for we made our students search for it. Then we are trying to 
uh, get them observe the sentences so that we can get feedbacks from them. How they feel about a sentence. What could be the outcome from this sentence, for example? We can start with that very basically. So then we can come to a conclusion as common meanings of model auxiliary verbs as seen on the corpus that we uh, investigated in here. Uh, model auxiliary verbs can be used in possibility sense sentences, certainty, necessity, ability, permission, recommendation, obligation, and future intention. Uh, as can be understood from those sentences, from those examples, let's say. So what about the grammar structure, okay? In order to investigate the grammar structures, again, I'm not changing my colors, Kivik sort, because I want my students to focus on uh, what is used before my MAV, what is used before my MAV, uh, my MAV, let's say. So in wood, for example, before that, a small airplane would land. So what do we have in here? We have a subject before our uh, model auxiliary verb, and we have a verb, a main verb, actually, as you see from the examples uh, for wood, let's say. Um, let's change our sentence. Let's go with should again. Do we have the same grammar structure, for example? Um, let's see, I'm searching for a proper example. For example, a good blurb should make readers want to blah, blah, blah. So again, before should we have a subject, after that we have a main verb, should make, should continue, should show, etc. Is it the same with might, for example? Um, her behavior, we have a subject here, might be, okay. I'm having a very superficial uh, look on the corpus that I have. Might follow, might hurt. Again, so do you see the structure? Do you see the pattern here? This is what I'm trying to make my students see uh, during my lesson with uh, end corpus tool. So that when they give, uh, when they give me their uh, feedback about the, uh, the sentence structures could be like this, blah, 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 subject, MAV, and then main verb, etc. If they can um, point out the, those structures, then I can say that, okay. Now they have a resource, they have, mm, mm, they have a, let's say big picture, then they can see it in a more detailed, very small picture. So. It is another way to make my students teach uh, grammar specifically for this topic, actually. And then I can give them my input, such as model auxiliary verbs are used after subject and followed by the base form of a, a verb. Models and the verbs that follow do not change form to indicate tense or take an ascending. They can all see, uh, they can see all those rules on the corpus that we are working on. So it's very um, practical to use uh, authentic uh, resources in a way that they can just click, 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 and they can uh, have their input by themselves from tools such uh, as Antcon, for example. So what would be the learning outcomes from this session? I prepared a very small, very basic, very um, introduction type of uh, lesson for you. Well, our learning outcomes could be conducting concordant uh, search because as you see in here, we are trying to see uh, in-text uh, locations of the words, of the sentences, of the even clusters or engrams that we haven't mentioned uh, in this session. Our students can learn identifying patterns surrounding a particular word or grammar unit as you see in here, and they can make um, multimodal compar uh, comparisons using corpus linguistics methods. Again, as you see in here, uh, on the features that we haven't mentioned, unfortunately, due to our uh, limited time, uh, you can actually make more detailed, uh, let's say, corpus investigation or grammar investigation with these tools. 
And lastly, you can uh, you do actually encourage your students for self-driven learning, which would make them, um, let's say, not obligated to a one uh, source, but they can create their so their sources, their own sources for their sake of learning. So this is my uh, presentation. Thanks for listening. I hope you can get uh, any benefit from it. So if you have any questions or anything, I guess for you to jump. So I, can. I, I have just a question, uh, Zaira. Thank you so much for your presentation and for the uh, detailed guidance. Thank uh, you, Jam. Yeah. If I would like to export the results, so how can I do that? I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I would like to export those sentences, for example. I see. Mind. Yes, to a Microsoft Word document. Okay. That you know, I can uh, play with the sentences. Okay, so actually, we have file section in here. I guess I'm still sharing my screen so you That's can no uh, see it. Then I can save output. I can uh, imp not import, I guess I can do that with this. Mm -hmm. So, on conc results, it is again be uh, saved as a text uh, result. So, let me record sorry save it to my desktop and let's see if it's recorded or saved actually as you see in here it is a bit complicated i yeah. guess for probably it's it's because of uh and kong i don't think other advanced let's say uh corpus tools would have that problem but if you want to still extract your um exemplified sentences maybe you can uh, search it this way, or at least save it this way. It would be easier, probably. Of course, yeah. For example, if I would like to, as a teacher, show some example sentences, mm -hmm. I can just copy and paste into a Microsoft Word document from this file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, a little exactly. bit. It seems, yeah, it's, it seems a little bit complex, but maybe you know, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take a few sentences. Uh, I don't think mm -hmm. so. Well, you know, but thing is actually the tool itself it's so easy to use yeah, sure. you can i mean within minutes within seconds actually you can came up with results and so um it would be very practical for you to use the uh application can itself. i ask another question uh, Zehra? yes of course uh, so have you used a wordsmith uh tool or something like that i, I remember that tool have you used that I mean, if, if, uh, if I have uh, I haven't uh, used WordSmith yet, but yeah. I have used Sketch Engine. I'm I'm very familiar with Sketch Engine's uh, preface, let's say. So. Okay, so we can say mm -hmm. that the, the trend is moving to more, you know, web-based uh, corpus tools because you know these are you know software-based. You have to install. Mm -hmm but the main advantage of other tools. So I have tried to use, for example, WordSmith tools for several times, but you know, it seemed to, to be a little bit complex. But, and of course, mm -hmm. you have to pay for it because an average user yes. you know, sometimes cannot pay uh, for that you know, uh, amount, but uh, the sketch mm -hmm. is great, for example, because it's web-based and uh, you can easily do the things. Okay, thank you so much for your answer. Exactly. You're, you, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. So if there are any other questions, I'm happy to answer, or maybe I should go jump can also contribute. Sure. You can answer. I have uh, one question. Um, I'm sorry. We... I'm sorry for interrupting. By the way, I have shared the link for the uh, certificate of attendance, mm -hmm. you know, for the audience. Okay, only one short question. Um, uh, if I want to use um, uh, um, a file, it must be in, in Word uh, or it can be, for example, in a PDF. Uh, uh, for AntConc software, mm -hmm. it should be a text file. But you can use control, uh, some softwares mm -hmm. other than Antconc. For example, if you use Sketch Engine, as Kirito mm -hmm. mentioned, it is a web-based program so that you can use uh, other text types, also PDF, doc, whatever you have in mind. You can export your data or 
upload your data into that database. But for Endcong, unfortunately, you can use uh, text-based um, .txt based uh, files okay. on Endcong, actually. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and I guess we You're have one welcome. question um, in our mm -hmm. chat um, from Ahmed. Um, is it possible to use such a concordance tool for any other language like Turkish other than uh, English, for instance? Well, I think for Endcong, it is manual, so um, I haven't tried to use it in Turkish, but for other web-based uh, corpus tools, I can say that, yes, there are many, many languages that you can use. They have already, uh, they have ready-made corpuses to you, uh, for you to use and investigate on. So I can suggest Sketch Engine for that, Alish Projam, maybe um, other, uh, sorry, corpus tools for them to use in Turkish. Sketch Engine is the best, down. is a perfect example for that, Zeda, Sketch Engine. There's a Turkish version. I, of I agree. Not, yes. with, not with the full, mm -hmm. full functions, but there's still a uh, Turkish version is added into the sketch engine and users can use it mm -hmm. very, for many different purposes. Yes. I mean, you can also create your own uh, corpus and then you can try to work on that with Endcong. I don't have any ready made Turkish uh, corpus so that I can just uh, work on it right now, but I'm sure you can at least try it after uploading and going to your computer, maybe. Thank you very much. We have another uh, participant who also, uh, Magdalena, who confirmed uh, that that uh, Sketch Engine is as um, the good solution mm -hmm. in case of other languages. Yes. Um, are there any other questions? Um, um, maybe I, I could ask you to, to write down your uh, email addresses uh, uh, just in case on, mm -hmm. in the chat, just in case our participants would like to uh, ask you any other questions or consult something um, by, by further um, uh, research. Uh, so, so once again, thank you very much. Uh, Ferry, do you have any, any other questions or suggestions? Um, no, the, the, I would like to thank all the presenters and of course the audience uh, for uh, coming and uh, sharing their uh, erudite you know, uh, presentations. Uh, and and by the way, I would like to uh, say that you know our next um, webinar will be towards the end of October, when our presenter will be uh, Professor Dr. Greta Gorsuch from the United States, and she will be talking about uh, language testing um, and strategies uh and examples from different contexts she was going to provide examples from different contexts and we're going to share the uh announcement in due course okay thank you so much thank you very much you once very again much. um if you want to uh by the way if any of our participants would like to share with us any any suggestions or or proposals concerning our future speakers, please uh, do do that. You can write to us on the gesture. Also, if you have any any conference announcements or uh, call for papers, we can distribute them. So so let's treat it as as the common platform of of uh, uh, you know um, discussion and exchanging ideas. You understand? So I think we just missed the question. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So yeah. So. Uh, this is Please from read the question. You know, Mustafa Zeki Trakla uh -huh. uh, from Cardinals Technical University, so one of our previous speakers. Um, uh, he says, Thank you, Zehra, for this nice presentation. Uh, do you think the use exploitation of Antkong and other tools, engines, are learning tools or the tools that help improve our analysis? Is it a supplementary option in learning or self-driven learning as you stated in your conclusion? Well, um, I believe that it's a learning tool because as someone who learned, um, let's say English from reading fictions myself, I think that we can use these tool, tools as a learning tool because at least I am seeing in Antconc, you, we. Uh, haven't mentioned that, but in more advanced, let's say, or more prepared uh, corpus 
corpus. Uh, you can actually see the text versions of the text. So you can actually see the grammar structure. For example, you can see the subject, which one uh, is the subject of the word, which one is the uh, verb of the sentence, etc. So for a more detailed analysis, yes, you can use uh, corpus tools check for a learning tool. If you want to uh, learn English by yourself or any other language, you can uh, use it with a very detailed analysis so that you can actually learn from it. I think it's also a check. And it could be a self-driven learning because um, yes, I need my teacher with me, but at least I can improve myself by myself with those tools. So I can, uh, I can uh, say that, yes, all the things you have mentioned, uh, Mustafa Zeki Hocam, yes, you are right. You can use those tools. As you said, um, Alishkro Jam, do you have anything that I don't know if I missed uh, anything? No, no, you've not missed anything. Thank you for the very nice answer, uh, response back to this question here. Well, for my, what I can say is that let's make it on the safe side that we take it supplementary, but there is always a risk that they will be learning new and more things day by day here. And uh, the days are not ahead, the days are not uh, that they will replace many teachers and many people are like in the classroom time here, right? They will learn and they are learning more and more and more and more in days and days time here. For the time being, they are supplementary, but in the future, I think I believe that they will be learning and they will be learning machines and they will replace many learning uh, situation classrooms for the learners here. Okay. These days are not, uh, are not uh, far, I believe. Anyway. Let's make it supplementary for the uh, for the time being here. Thank you for this. It's a very good question, by the way. Thank you, Mr. Vizek Hocam, for these great questions. We were not prepared to face a question like this here, but this question requires more and more discussion in between us, I suppose, here, right? At the right time, of course. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you in the next webinar. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.